Okay, hey everyone. We've got a beam that is supported by a pin in A and a two-force strut BC. We want to find our reactions at A and B. All right, so this is a pin, and then this is that two-force member. And we'll talk about that in a second, what that means. We want to draw our free body diagram first. It's always our first step, so I'm just going to draw a line that represents this blue bar right here or beam, whatever you want to call it. Now let's go ahead and draw the forces that we know on here. We have the 600 Newton force. So that one's easy. Then we've got 800 Newtons over here. And let's go ahead and put our distances on. Sometimes I'm bad about putting the distances, but let's go ahead and put those on here. I'll add these in just a second. Now we've also got a couple moment that's applied we need that on here, so 900 Newton meters. And now that we're at this point, we have to look at the supports. We've got a pin here at A. So again, you already know that a pin provides X and Y force components. You know that, but remember to think about why that is. This pin is going to fix this in place, but still allow rotation about that axis. All right. So imagine this not being here, this little two force member. If that wasn't here, it would be fixed in place, but I could swing this around here, but I can't translate it. All right, so the translation that's prevented is prevented by the two forces. Now, just looking at this, I can't tell which direction these forces should be in due to the pin. So I'm just going to assume positive. I'm gonna say AX is going to the right, AY is going up. Just pick the directions. Again, I think it's easier to always assume positive. That takes care of the pin. Now what about this? Now let's think about what this does. We've got this member here. It's at this angle. Now if these forces are pushing down on this, think about what this force does. This thing is trying to rotate down. This force, just due to the way it's attached here, is trying to push up that way. Okay, so it's trying to prevent the rotation, and it's doing that by applying this force in this direction. Okay, so that's going to prevent any of that downward translation. So let's draw the force like this, and I'm going to call it BC. Okay. So now you have that. That's going to be your diagram. And then let's finish putting these distances here. So this is one meter, and then this, what's this, two meters. Right there. Okay. That'll be our diagram. There's one more thing I want to put on here. I need this angle right here. Now let's look over at this, what we got. Can we find that angle? We know this distance, this is 2, and we know this distance is 1.5, so can we find this angle? We can, because that's just a right triangle. So you can find that angle. So theta here is going to be the arc tangent of 1.5 over 2, which is 36.87 degrees. That'll be our final free body diagram. All right, so that gives us that. Now let's go ahead and let's, I wanna write a note here for these two. So again, we just assumed the positive direction. If we get a negative, value for AX or AY, that means we chose the wrong direction. That's all it means. But as long as everything is consistent, then it's okay. Now that we've got our diagram, we're ready to get started. 
we want to look at the forces. I want to say to the right's positive in the x direction. Our components in the x direction, we've got this ax, and then we've got an x component here due to bc. We'll have ax plus bc needs to be cosine 36.87. And that needs to be set equal to zero. Let's call this equation one. Can't do anything with that because we have two unknowns. We need more equations. So let's go to the y equation. I'm going to say up's positive. Now I have ay. That's positive. I've got a y component here in that two force strut. That is going to be a positive because it's going up. So I have plus BC sine 36.87. What else do we got? We need this one and this one. Those are both negative. So we'll have negative 600 minus 800. Set that equal to zero. And I'm going to call that two. Now, we still have too many unknowns. We have three unknowns, only two equations. We need a moment equation. And I am going to take the moment about point A. All right, and you could pick point B also, be about the same. Um, but point A gets rid of three forces, gets rid of AX, AY, and the X component of BC. And so, you don't have to find three of those moments. So that's why I picked that point. Now let's start with a 600 Newton force first. So that one's pointing down. And the distance to move this over to A is one. That's meters. Is that positive or negative? It's gonna be negative because it's clockwise, right? So if this thing were free to rotate, if you held that in place right there at A, this force would push it this way, which is clockwise. Now let's look at 800. Force is 800. The distance, we need to go from here all the way over to here. That's 2 plus 1 plus 1, which is 4. That's negative also, because it's clockwise rotation. And then last couple of things, we've got BC here. Now, what components of BC do we need to worry about? Do we need to worry about the X component? Remember, the x component is right here. That's not creating a moment, right, because it goes through A. So we don't worry about that one, but we do need to worry about this one. We need the distance from here to here, which is 1 plus 1, so 2. And the force is BC sine 36.87, and that's going to be positive. Like that. And then finally, what about this? We got this couple moment hanging out here at the end. That one we just put in the equation. It's already a moment, so you just put the number, so 900, and then check to see if it's positive or negative. This one's drawn in the clockwise sense, so that is negative. And make that equal to zero. Now notice through the choice of point A for our moment, we got rid of two unknowns. Now we only have one unknown in our equation, which is good, right? So now we can solve for BC. And if you do that, you get 3,916.66 Newtons. Positive means this was the correct direction. Now you're gonna take this number, plug it into equations one and two, and you can get the other two unknowns. So from equation one, you'll get AX, and AX is 3,133.32 newtons. And then from equation two, you're gonna get AY equals negative 950 newtons. Now we got the negative, so that means up here, we should have put it in the negative direction, okay? We assumed positive because we said we didn't know what direction it was gonna be in. 
we should have put it in the negative direction, but we didn't. So that's why you get this negative sign. But as long as your force diagram is consistent with your answer, all is good. Right? So you don't really need to worry about it as long as everything is consistent. So let's put a little note here. We'll put negative because we drew the force in the wrong direction. But again, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just that's why you got the negative because you drew the arrow in the wrong direction. Okay, and one more thing I want to make a note about the point where you're picking your moment about. Let's make a note about that. You want to pick the point that has the most unknowns going through it. And the reason why that is, is because then in your moment equation, like we saw here, we only ended up with one unknown. If I would have picked point here, whatever that would be, let's call it point C. If I would have picked this point, I would have the unknown BC and a Y that I need to find moments for for this point. So you would have another equation with two unknowns in it. So you want to pick the point that has the most unknowns going through it. And the reason for that is it reduces the number of unknowns in your moment equation. So then it's easier to solve for the unknown that's left. All right. That's all for that one. I'll see you all in the next video for one more example.